All right. Now we're going to go. We're going to get. We're going to get into the gameplay in a moment. But let me um, discuss one other thing before we do, and that's the social networking part of the World of Warcraft. Lots of people playing simultaneously. Now, one way to think about social networks is along the parameter of how long does the does your relationship last with the people around you? And so I've organized the different things that happen in World of Warcraft along these lines. Now what I'm going to do, and especially if you're a person who has played World of Warcraft a lot, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make the things that you've seen over and over again and never really thought about strange to you and new to you and give you a way of looking at them that allows you to take your knowledge of World of Warcraft and apply it in general to things that are going on. Frankly, World of Warcraft is not you know, it's not the most important thing going on to me. It may be to you, but it's not to me. What's important to me are the concepts from World of Warcraft that apply equally well to all sorts of things. And to give you an attitude towards World of Warcraft, especially if you played it before, that will allow you to use your knowledge creatively in other realms. Now, if you haven't played World of Warcraft before, you can use this as a way of, can I figure out what's going on in World of Warcraft without having to be a player, without having to go through years and years of struggle. And I can tell you from personal experience, because I never really have played World of Warcraft, believe it or not, I mean, I'm talking about it, all this, all this stuff, but I'm not a World of Warcraft player. I've played for, you know, all of uh, maybe an hour and a half in my entire life. But I've used the skills that I have in analysis of systems, and specifically in this idea of the tier architecture and the structure of information, and what we'll talk about in a moment, algorithms and functionality and all that kind of stuff, to decode World of Warcraft and to understand it in a way that, frankly, most players don't understand it. Most players are completely ignorant of exactly what's going on behind the scenes. By understanding what's going on behind the scenes, as a player, as a person who's never played before, you can totally understand the idea of Warcraft and be able to talk about Warcraft at a much more, at a much deeper level than the people who are experienced players. Now, obviously, they're going to know a lot of stuff that you don't, but in fact, you'll know some stuff that they don't. Okay, so World of Warcraft Social Network. Um, in order from most persistent, in other words, this relationship has the longest life, to relationships that have the shortest life, here's how it goes. At the very top of the hierarchy, the thing that you belong to forever, basically at least one character that you own belongs to forever, is called a faction. A faction you might think of like as a nation. It's the largest group of people. When you start, you go right into that faction and your character stays in that faction forever. Then you can belong to these things called guilds. Guilds are long-term associations between people, and they are your peers. They're people that you're going to play with over and over and over again. So when you, belong, when you, when you, when you um, become part of a guild, you're saying, this is a club that I'm going to stay in for a while, generally speaking. And then there's two kinds of groupings that you group in temporarily. When you're, when you're with them, you're really together with those people, but then when you're, when, after a short period of time, it's gone. And the first one is a raid. And a raid has lots and lots of people. There are tons of people, you know, 20, 30, 40 people who all get together to perform a quest, to perform a mission, basically, not a quest exactly, to perform a mission, a goal, all together. And then there are groups. The groups are a small number of people, four or five people that get together to do a similar thing, maybe to attack, uh, to attack a monster that they couldn't attack alone. Okay, so that's the idea. And then in a, um, and for the shortest life, or the shorter life, at least in terms of your interaction, is your friends list. You have a whole list of friends, but you're not necessarily, you're not playing with those friends all the time. Not like in Facebook. In Facebook, your list of friends are your world. They're who you hang out with. In World of Warcraft, you're likely to be hanging out with these guilds and groups, and your friends are just kind of around, and when you want to be in joint action with them, you'd bring them into a guild or a group. Or excuse me, you bring them into a group or a raid, or you join the same guild. Okay, so you have this long list of friends, Sometimes you group up with them, mostly you're not grouped up with them. And then the shortest is random people you just happen to run into. Run into a person, you happen to be the same place at the same time, you ask them some advice, they ask you some advice, you have a short conversation and you move on. Okay, that's the nature of the social network in World of Warcraft. Very different, <coughs> excuse me, than the social network inside of Facebook. Very different. Facebook is really friend focused. And World of Warcraft, while you're likely to be playing with your friends or you're likely to become friends with these people, it's really group focused. It's focused on the groups of people who have a common purpose to get to a common goal. And that's really the nature of the social relationship there. So it's much more sort of like, you might think of it more like a business relationship. The social network inside of World of Warcraft is more like we're all here to get something done. Let's work 